Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. Um, wanted to come on here and give you guys an update on some of the stuff going on with Israel and the United Arab Emirates. I just had an article sent to me from a wonderful brother in Christ, Jordan Hughes. Um, so I figured I'd bring this article to your guys' attention if you are not aware of it. This is huge, right? We've been hearing the whole phrase, uh, peace in the Middle East, right? They're continuing this, what I believe is a false peace initiative between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, um, you know, surrounding, you know, Arab nations. So I just figured I'd come on here, bring you all this article off of the Jerusalem Post, and um, I'm going to try to keep this video relatively short. I don't want to take up too much time, but wanted to come on here and report on this article. So let's get started. Again, this is off of the Jerusalem Post. Israel and the United Arab Emirates flight lands safely in Abu Dhabi. F-35 talks to be held. Uh, quote, I'm sure Mr. Netanyahu sees the opportunities coming from this relationship. And that was a quote from the White House Special Adv Advisor, Jared Kushner. Uh, and this is a report coming out of Abu Dhabi. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu trusts U.S. President Donald Trump to not endanger Israel's security. White House Special Advisor Jared Kushner said on Monday aboard the first ever, first ever direct flight from Israel to the United Arab Emirates, you know, on, on an airplane. This was the first ever direct flight from Israel to the United Arab Emirates. They landed in Abu Dhabi, which is the capital of the UAE, continuing onwards with the report. Quote, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the president will discuss that at some point, according to Jared Kushner, and that is what he said when he was asked about the possible sale of F-35 stealth jets to the UAE, which is controversial in Israel. That's how it's viewed. Kushner said that Trump can be trusted, Trump can be trusted to maintain Israel's qualitative military edge, but that the U.S. also has a decades-long defense partnership with the United Arab Emirates. Quote, I, I'm sure Mr. Netanyahu sees the opportunities coming from this relationship, Kushner went on to further add. As for the first Israeli flight over Saudi Arabia, Kushner said that the Saudis are, quote, very gracious and that the flight is, quote, a manifestation of what is possible in the Middle East. We can take it as a sign. It's an, encour it's an encouragement for this progress, according to Jared Kushner. Netanyahu radioed in a message to the plane while it was flying over Saudi Arabia, responding to questions as to which Middle Eastern countries may make peace with Israel next. Kushner chuckled, saying, quote, I know the people in Israel very well, and when there's an accomplishment, they say what's next. I'm going to ask the Israeli people for just one day. Let's take a moment to celebrate. U.S. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien says that he's, quote, helpful that this will be the first step in creating momentum that will lead to other nations deciding it is in their best interests to normalize ties with Israel. Kushner said that Trump's vision for the Middle East has long been, has long been that amid the, quote, conflict, chaos, and division of the last decades, we do believe that we are ushering in a new hopefulness that peace is possible, unquote. Here's another quote that Kushner went on to say. One of the great things I love about working with this president is that he doesn't play it safe. He tries to take on challenges. Peace in the Middle East, there's that saying again, was something that became an actual pursuit. The special advisor commended Netanyahu and the crown prince of Abu Dhabi, Mohammed bin Zayed, for their, quote, great leadership. As for the Trump peace plan and its allowing for Israel to extend its sovereignty to parts of Judea and Samaria, Kushner said that Israel is, quote, going to be focused right now on the relationship, the, the newfound peace agreement with the United Arab Emirates. I think that'll make peace in time with the Palestinians much more possible, unquote. Still, he added, President Trump loves to leave his options open. Annexation was included in a plan because it was clear that, quote, in the context of any agreement, Israel wasn't going to give up that territory, and the U.S. had to make sure Israel's security was protected. Recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and potentially recognizing Israeli sovereignty in the West Bank would, quote, take those provocative issues off the table. Kushner criticized the Palestinians for rejecting the Trump plan even before it was published January the 28th. Uh, certain people like division and the status quo for whatever reason, unquote, again, Jared Kushner. Upon landing, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke to the pilot, Tal Becker, and said, quote, you are about to open the door to a different kind of peace now. 
peace with investments, peace with tourism, peace with the very many fruits of peace that will be distributed here to our two peoples and also to the peoples of the region. He called the United Arab Emirates trip a historic blessing. I have worked on this for many, many years, the Prime Minister added, believing that peace for peace will bring around a big turnaround and that the Arab people will be able to accept the state of Israel. Uh, and then he continued onwards with, uh, quote, We came here to make vision a reality. And this was Israel's national security advisor. Uh, this is what he said in Arabic during his opening speech. Quote, There is no limit to the cooperation we can establish between us in science, innovation, health, aviation, agriculture, energy, and many other issues. We call on more countries to participate with us in the peace process for the peoples of the entire region. Thank you to our Emirates hosts and our American partners for their leadership. In Hebrew, he said, quote, A quarter of a century has passed since the last peace agreement was signed between an Arab state and Israel. I would like to express to our hosts, headed by His Excellency, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of the United Arab Emirates, our appreciation for his brave step. Israel and the United Arab Emirates have much in common. Our region is full of challenges and threats, but we have the courage and the ability to resist them. This is huge. All right, Kate, this is like adding on details to the now existing peace agreement between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Now they're wanting to get other Arab nations involved. I had read somewhere that Russia is actually in support of this deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. This is huge, okay, because they believe that they're that they're wanting to come up with sort of this whole peace in the Middle East initiative. You've heard that saying a lot. And what a lot of people don't realize is that this is going to end up being a false peace. Okay, this is to bring about the arrival of the Antichrist after the restrainer, which is us, right? The Holy Spirit, the church, is removed, right? So if we're this close to the Antichrist beast system and the false peace in the Middle East, we know we're even closer to the rapture of the church. Right, So I want to go ahead and read, so that will conclude the core update. I want to read a little bit in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we'll do verse 3 through 7. Let's do verse 3 through 7 of 1 Thessalonians 5. Um, you know what? No, let's do 2. Let's start in 2. Let's do 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2 through 7. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety... Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light, and children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. We're seeing this, peace and safety, peace in the Middle East peace this, peace that, right? It's going to be, it's going to end up being a false peace to bring about the Antichrist and the, the whole mark of the beast, false prophet, one world system, all of that's on the horizon. And this just brings the whole world one step closer, right? This is significant. This is really significant. This just screams Daniel 9, just right in my face, man. I mean, I'm going to go to Daniel 9 and we're going to read verse 24 through 27, because I believe that this is a foreshadowing of the Daniel 9.27 peace covenant that'll start, right, and enact the events of the seven-year tribulation period. Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. Uh, you know, and the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Daniel 9.27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And this is referring to the Antichrist. He will confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, three and a half years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. 
even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. We are seeing a foreshadow of the Antichrist Daniel 927 covenant system right before our very eyes right now. If you're a non-believer, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's time to make a decision. Okay, all you have to do to be saved, right, and to be a child of God, an heir of God, and a co-heir with Christ Jesus and be heaven bound is to just believe the gospel. That's it. Okay, there's no, you know, ridiculous amount of good works that you have to do to obtain salvation. Right, Because salvation is not a process, it's an event, an instantaneous one-time event, a free gift given to all those who believe the gospel. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received." How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. That is what saves you if you believe that in your heart, right? That Jesus died on the cross, shedding his precious blood for the remission of all mankind's sin, past, present, and future. On that cross at Calvary, he was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead. And he rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification. Right? We, we are justified and saved by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. I'm going to read the book of John. We'll do chapter 3, verses, uh, we'll do verses 15 through 18. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It all comes down to your belief in Christ alone. Let's read John 3.36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Hath is present tense. That means you have everlasting life right now if you believe the gospel. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. We know that the wrath of God is referring to the seven-year tribulation period. I believe that that verse also supports a pre-tribulational rapture. Let's go to, again, book of John. This time we'll go to chapter 6 and we'll read verses 40 and 47. So here's John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Acts 16, 31. We're going to read in the book of Ephesians to close this out. Chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Believe on Christ, you guys. It's that simple, okay? I just wanted to come on here and, and be sure that I kind of kept you all up to date with the situation in Israel and sort of their uh, ties, I guess you could say, with the United Arab Emirates and potential ties with some other Arab nations. So wanted to bring that to your attention. I'll see you guys in the next video. Should the Lord tarry his coming, of course. Otherwise, God bless. Believe the gospel if you haven't, all right? Take care.